Chandrapur is an exceptional landscape. Vast stretches of forests interspersed with numerous human establishments. In the heart of Chandrapur is Tadoba Andari Tiger Reserve. Tadoba is rich in biodiversity. The forests have extraordinary densities of wild animals. In this flourishing habitat, tigers thrive. More than 80 villages surround the tiger reserve. But in this human-dominated landscape, a healthy population of tigers still survive. Outside the park, living in the buffer forests, resting in the farmlands and drinking from the village lakes. Historically, tigers and people have lived here, side by side, in a truce where both carefully avoided each other. The locals, the Gon tribals, worshipped the tiger. Their respect for the animal could be seen from the unparalleled tolerance they had towards attacks on people. In spite of losing family members, they respected the tiger. For a long, long time, everything was quiet. The Chandrapur landscape has always seen attacks on people by tigers and leopards. Gazettes have always shown that there have been three or four attacks in a year. People in this area have always been tolerant of uh, losing livestock and family members to large carnivore attacks. But with a, such a spike, they became nervous, they were confused, there was a lot of fear and people seemed to be losing their tolerance. The frequency of attack really changed the school of thought that I can also be attacked. This tiger what I see here can attack me. Now that was very worrying for everybody. Poonam and I have been working in this area for over 25 years. Chandrapur is almost a second home for us. I saw my first tiger here. But with all these attacks, there was so much negative feeling about the tigers. The locals were fine, but the press and political opinions were causing a lot of unrest amongst the people. The only reason tigers were doing so well in Chandrapur was because of the locals who still respected and worshipped them. If that changed, we would lose the tigers and that would be very sad. We really wanted to understand these attacks and see what we could do in reducing them. The Chandrapur district is a mix of development and forest cover. In the heart of this landscape is Taroba Andari Tiger Reserve. But surrounding it is a mix of development, villages, Roads, mines, what were once continuous forests is fragmented now. The area immediately around the Tharoba core is the buffer zone. It is still a protected area, but people live around it and sometimes use it for various purposes. The villages are very close to the forest. Some of the patches of forest in the buffer zone act as corridors through which tigers move between forests. Tigers sometimes live along these corridors. When the attacks peaked in 2006, most people thought they were happening within the Tadoba Reserve. But after studying close to 300 cases, Harsh and Poonam found that almost all the attacks were outside the park. They were happening in the buffer forests and the corridors. As we investigated, we realized that most people didn't even know that tigers were present around here. They just didn't expect to encounter a predator so far away from Taroba. These were all reserve forests, mainly used for bamboo and timber extraction. No one was monitoring wildlife here. Without the knowledge of tiger dynamics, there was no way we could understand this conflict and why this sudden catastrophic increase in attacks. We realized 
that the forest department staff were best suited to monitor tigers. They were patrolling these reserve forests, but unlike the staff in the tiger reserve, their agenda was not wildlife monitoring. They were never trained to systematically collect information. If this could be changed, we would have some valuable information. With support from the state government and the National Tiger Conservation Authority, we started an initiative called the Corridor Conservation Program, through which we trained the department staff in tiger monitoring. When the monitoring started, they came to know that there's these tigers which are prevalent and they're breeding there, there are cubs there, so many things came out of that. We trained almost 400 to 450 uh, field personnel. And suddenly in that year, their training level came up to the level of the staff, which was inside a core. All this new technology of GPS and camera trapping and digital cameras, you know, the, through the program, they received all these things. So that gave them this, this massive ownership and this competition amongst themselves that, you know, I've got two pictures today, I've got four pictures, my picture, my camera trap picture is better than yours and stuff like that. As the monitoring data started to come in, we began to understand tiger distribution. Tigers were surviving in patches of forests that were surrounded by human habitation and farmland. At that time, it was surprising to see tigers so far away from a protected forest. It was contrary to the common belief that tigers needed undisturbed forests. The presence of tigers so close to humans need not necessarily lead to conflict. There were just too many questions. We knew we could never have conclusive answers, but we were able to form some theories. Taru Bandhari started enjoying a lot of protection around 2003-2004 with better management. And this resulted in a good habitat, more herbivores, and a higher population of tigers. So with more breeding of tigers, probably there was more dispersal outside. So we're talking of a larger number of animals, larger number of tigers moving towards this human-dominated landscape, which could have resulted in a, a conflict between people and tigers. Another thing that happened at this point of time, where there were conflict leopards, which were caged from another part of the state, which were then released in uh, Tadoba or in the fringes. This may also have caused uh, a kind of unbalance in the number of uh, carnivores or the predators in this landscape, which was already stressed because of uh, low prey or fragmentation which was happening. The equation of large carnivores in this landscape changed with the uh, increased leopards which were left here. Another thing what we observed was that there were a lot of the, you know, the management was using a lot of cages to trap leopards. Mainly this was a pacifier for the villagers so that, uh, you know, they will not protest too much if there's a leopard presence. But many times leopards were getting caught in those cages, which were then a problem to just to hold them. So they were released about 20 kilometers, 30 kilometers from the area what they were caged in. The leopards which were displaced had to find the way back as cats home onto their home ranges. And in doing so in this landscape, crossing farmlands and forests, they used to encounter a lot of people in the forest, in the farmlands, and there is to be some conflict. Another factor which could have added to this conflict at this particular time when it peaked was that these areas are forests which are used for uh, plantation and extraction. And labor used for this extraction actually camp near water bodies which are in the forest. So uh, these large carnivores which are displaced because of labors camping near water bodies tend to then come to uh, village lakes or closer to human dwellings looking for water. So this actually creates uh, an area where, which is prone to conflict. So we're looking at a landscape which suddenly gets fragmented. There is a larger dispersal of tigers from the core into these corridors. We have additional problem leopards which are released here. Present leopards are being caged and then their stress level goes up. Plus we have people, labor, moving into uh, areas where you know they are water bodies and thereby displacing tigers and leopards from those areas. Finally, we have a, we have a landscape with all this leading to uh, a spike in the conflict level between large carnivores and people.
we were able to find explanation for the spike in attacks but within 3 years there were 60 attacks the attitude of people began to change these were people who once worshiped the tiger but now it turned to anger and hatred they just couldn't tolerate the sight of a tiger or a leopard without intervention they were ready to kill an animal on sight the only way we could ever hope to reverse this was by finding ways of keeping people safe but for that we had to understand how and where people were being attacked in the first place as we investigated each and every case we began to get some insights people were being attacked under similar conditions time after time the patterns were very clear Almost three years after the conflicts began, we were able to find explanations. There were many reasons why the peak in attacks could have happened. We also began to understand the circumstances of the attacks. But even after our continued work with the forest department, we were not able to completely stop the conflict. In spite of everyone's best efforts, death due to tiger attacks continued to happen. The forest department did a lot of work where they, uh, the beat guards would go in the forest and make sure that people were not coming in where animals were there and you know staying away. So lots of cases were registered and the beat guard would stand there with a stick and say don't come here we've been asked you know. But people well they needed firewood and they needed because there was no other livelihood options. So they if the beat guard stood there from sunrise to sunset these guys started going there at 4 a.m. or maybe 10 p.m when they knew that the beat guard would be at home and then attacks continued happening. So the problem though we identified what it was, was not getting sorted out and that's when we realized almost in 2011 that unless these people themselves realize why conflict is happening and unless they know that they play a very very important part in their own safety, till then the situation would not solve and then that is the time when we realized that we need to create small teams in each of these villages and those teams will tell their own people what to do instead of us going and telling them where a large crowd would not listen to us. So it's always easier to train 
a smaller group or sensitize a group of maybe four to six people in every village than to talk to a crowd of hundred, most of who are angry. So that was how this idea came to be of creating these core teams. These are the teams which were trained from 2011 onwards and they would become our first line of defense. This team was the first step towards an early warning system. We told the villagers, anybody seeing any carnivore, these are the seven people in your village who you have to come and report. And the beat guard then was connected to this team. So suddenly there was this major teamwork between the forest guard and this team of seven people of the community who started sharing information, discussing and most of their issues also with the beat guard were getting sorted out because of this daily dialogue. In a place like Chandrapur, where tigers live so close to people, understanding the rules of the jungle can make the difference between life and death. Since the villages still depend on the forests, the way forward would be to take care of their needs. If their needs could be provided for, they wouldn't have to enter the forest. The Chandrapur landscape is a precious example of coexistence between humans and tigers. It is worth every effort to preserve it. Where else in the world do you find tigers breeding in places like uh, how, where they are breeding in Chandrapur district, in corridors, in open forests, forests well beyond the protected areas. But only thing is that people have to be safe. If people are safe, tigers are safe. So we have a new scheme uh, which was launched uh, two years back by the new government. It's called. Uh, Shama Prasad Mukherjee, Janwan Yojana. It is people's welfare scheme in the forest. And that provides about 20 lakh rupees to a village. If the village is choose uh, cutting of trees, free grazing through a voluntary resolution, then this money is used for both subsidizing cooking gas and providing alternative livelihood. So this is one very big source of moving away from a conflict and also allowing the jungle and wildlife to survive better. पुष्कर से लोगों नवयन नौ टक के लोगों जंगला में तो जानस बन के ले लाए जैसे काढ़ाला वगैरह ये जाते होते कोनी धारने का पला जाते होते तो ते फार कमी जाला अन्य तेजा मोड़े हम चा गावातील ऐसे घटना पन खूब कमी जाला बाईचांस एका दिवों जाता पन खूब कमी जाला The people living in urban areas are, as on today, very much interested in coming to jungle area to see tiger and wild animals. So, when once uh, these tourists start coming to the tiger reserves uh, for seeing tiger or wild animals, there are so many job opportunities are created. We in Maharashtra have, the last four years, tried to promote ecotourism and tourism in a very big way around these parks not for the end of tourism per se, but because of tourism is a great conservation tool. Tourism is non-extractive. It doesn't cut a single bamboo. It doesn't take away a single living species outside the forest. Yes, it does cause disturbance, but that disturbance is such a small cost to pay in relation to the payoff of incomes generated to local people directly resulting, visibly resulting from a surviving tiger, a surviving forest. This direct relationship without exploiting the forest is so much more important uh, that we need to be able to bear the cost of disturbing forests and wildlife for the sake of tourism because it generates so much sustainable, perpetual income. The year ago, we didn't have so much of tourism in the jungle. We had to kill mammals, birds, etc. All of them were working. In the village, we had to go to the jungle. 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 So, what is it? There are so many tourists. After coming here, there are some resorts. In that case, there are some people who are working there. Or some people who are working there. वो काम मिलता है हाउसकीपिंग का काम मिलता है तो उनसे उनका फायदा होता है अब दो साल पीछे जाते तो हमारा घर बिल्कुल झोपड़ा था सिर्फ एक दो ही रूम थी उसमें तो भी उसमें से अभी लास्ट ईयर हमारा घर बना है तो स्लाब का थोड़ा सा बना है एक दो चार लोग रह सकते इतना अच्छा बना है और पहले मेरे घर में ब्लैक एंड व्हाइट छोटी सी टी थी अभी मैंने इस ताड़ोबा की वजह से पूरी एल लिया हुआ है द योजना हैज़ ब्रॉड लॉड ऑफ चेंज इट हैज़ ब्रॉड ओनरशिप 
and the villagers believe today that with the yojana they are part of this uh, tiger conservation what is happening in the landscape definitely it has brought more hygiene and uh, it has mitigated conflict to a great extent it's a win win situation for everybody agar koi poaching kar raha hai wo dikhega to jaise hi gaadi dekhegi guide dikhega to wo bhag jayenge to poaching nahi hogi ani disla tar guide ani driver tala pakdun lage department la department cha swadhin karne de तर टायगरला खूप महत्व आहे का म्हणजे टायगर हा त्याच्या त्याच्याशिवाय जंगलच नसतं जानवर तो सुरक्षित राहणार नाही अगर जानवर सुरक्षित नाही तो आम्ही सुरक्षित नाही समजलं